my name is Mary, and I've been running a blog for the last couple of years, primarily focusing on opera. I also write about theatre, art, dance and classical music for other online publications and blogs such as Fringe Opera, LBN Card, Theatre and Perform and Culture Vulture for Clan. On average, I see one to two operas in a week, whether that's a live performance or a cinema broadcast, and that goes on top of the other events I review. I started writing my blog out of sheer interest and passion for opera. I wanted to be able to write about my experience, record them for my own personal purposes, but also let other, others read about the performance. I am not a musician, and I'm not a performer. My background in music only goes so far as my years in primary school. I passed my grade three level exam in piano, I played the recorder, and I was also forced to attend some music theory classes by my mum. <laughs> but I despised it so much, I gave up after the fourth lesson. For the blogs I write for, I focus on both fringe small-scale productions as well as the big names, though many bloggers will know that major newspapers do not cover new works by all the do not cover a lot of new works by young and up-and-coming ensembles and artists. They simply don't get the same attention and airtime as the big names. There's various reasons for why major newspapers often don't cover them, yet this is where the bloggers can come in and fill the void. That's not to say that it, it is a blogger's responsibility to do so, but we bloggers certainly don't have any restrictions. There are specialist websites and online publications that try to scope out and cover as many of these productions as, as much as possible, such as Bartrack. Yet overall, there still isn't enough coverage of them. So who do I write for? As pointed out previously, I originally wrote for myself, but I also share it online in hope that those who are curious and new to opera and classical music can engage. I don't write it for classical music critics or for performers, but I'm aware that they might read my blog. For example, I noticed that a New York tenor, Michael Fabiano, actively tweeted and quoted something I wrote about him in, in, in his recent performance at the Covent Garden. Also, I tend not to use technical language, mostly because I don't understand it myself. I'm not a musician, and I don't try to be. I simply, I simply don't have the specialist knowledge as a musician or a certified music critic may have. Yet with a blog, you're allowed to be less formal and more interactive, which is a good thing. It breaks down stereotypes, which suggest that opera or classical music is only accessible for the elite group. Yet my knowledge of opera, however, is, con is consistently increasing. I saw 50 operas in 2014, 64 operas last year, which is a big figure that I'm very proud about, <laughs> and it goes to show how much I'm devoted to the arts. I also hope to create dialogue with my readers, and that doesn't necessarily mean actual engagement. For me, it's about getting readers to see things from a different perspective and encouraging them to ask questions they hadn't thought about. As I've become prolific online, I've received both positive and negative comments about my views from my blogs. At first I didn't know how to handle them, but, from, but now I know never to take it personal and try to engage with the reader in hope that I might learn something new. In that respect, blogging is, is healthy in, in a net networking sense and also creating interesting dialogue. Mm. So for most bloggers, and I think um, Simon would agree, as he said, um, we are not paid, and we do it because we simply love writing about classical music or opera and the arts, and we absolutely love blogging. But I, I will admit, though, I am approached by opera and theatre companies, and they do ask me to blog about their shows, and in turn, they offer me complimentary tickets. But that doesn't mean that I'm a cheerleader. It doesn't mean that I will automatically give them a positive review. Instead, I'll write an honest one for my readers, including those who are considering seeing a show or for someone who isn't able to see a show at all. Thanks to the powers of social media, there's a spectrum of voices. The internet has given everyone, including bloggers, or not just bloggers, the tools to get their opinion heard, and now it's much easier to spread opinion in real time. With that in mind, blogging has allowed readers to have more choice about where they get their information from, now we know that the authority of classical music and opera doesn't have to come from only mainstream newspapers. This isn't to say that I think readers should only look at blogs. I'm saying that blogs can supplement what's already out there, and both bloggers and traditional journalists can coexist. After all, we're all on the same page, we're all on the same side, we aim to promote classical music and opera. Blogging has allowed me to engage with others in the industry and enhance my profile as a writer. 
It's fair to say that blogging is a bit of a training ground for future journalists, and without a doubt, I've noticed the influence blogging has had on my career. I, um, there's no style guide, no external sub-editor to look over your blog post, and although it may seem more opinion-based, a blogger still needs to do the research, have the knowledge and a consistent voice developing throughout their blog. I'd like to end with some final thoughts. Are the lines between blogging and journalism blurring? Well, there are some music journalists out there that have their own blog, such as Alex Ross from the New York and a blog called Suggestion in Time. Um, there are various singers and musicians as well who have their own blogs that allows them to keep in touch with their own blogs and sorry, with their own fans and let them keep tabs on what they're doing. But I think it's really important that readers ask themselves a few questions about the blog that they're approaching or about to read. Is it insightful? Does it seem credible? Is it interesting? And is it worth sharing? Um, I encourage people to keep reading both blogs and mainstream newspapers, and just generally just to see what is out there. Undoubtedly, there will be better blogs than mine, with better quality of writing, but essentially, in a blog, quality, good writing and knowledge is put into perspective from the lover of art. Thank you for listening. <laughs>